please go subscribe to the Rumble channel for Franchise Sports TV under the name FSTV22. Now, I'm using that Rumble channel for any purposes of me getting kicked off YouTube and also for more of my spicier joints. It's free as well. I have the freedom to say whatever I want to say as well. So go subscribe to FSTV22. That is Franchise Sports TV 22 on Rumble. So last night was a ceremonious night in the NBA. The Los Angeles Lakers played the Minnesota Timberwolves in game ones of both of their seasons. But it was ceremonious because last night... We got to see, for the first time ever in the NBA, a father and son duo play. And you know who that is. LeBron James and Bronny James. Despite the circus or media circus around it, the Lakers still got the win, which is a plus. And it makes J.J. Redneck look good as well. But also, last night came with a price that no one's talking about because, you know, ESPN, under the uh, watchful eye of the Homelander, they weren't going to talk about it. But before we begin, like, share, subscribe to the channel, Franchise Sports TV, of course, welcomes you to the channel. But let's go. So last night, the Lakers won a convincing game, 110-103. to for once, in a rarity, the Lakers looked like they were rolling all, all cylinders coming out the gate, while the Minnesota Timberwolves look like they're missing steps. But they do have, sorry, they do have two new additions to their team. One being Dante DiVincenzo, the other being Julius Randle. After the trade that happened last month, was it last month or earlier this month? I forgot. That sent. Former Timberwolves, Carl Anthony Towns, to the New York Knicks for those two players. Dante DiVincenzo will be a big asset to the Minnesota Timberwolves. But Julius Randle, I don't know about him. Because his spacing is not as great. Let's look at the box score right quick. Tells you somewhat of the tell of the game last night. As for Julius Randle, his Minnesota Timberwolves debut, he shot 5 for 10, 1 for 3, 5 for 7 for the free throw line, 9 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 turnovers, and 16 points. Jaden McDaniels, 3 for 8, 6 points himself, and he was in foul trouble. Rudy Gobert, who got a $110 million extension before the game, the Rain in defensive play of the year for reasons I don't know why. In 35 minutes, he went 5 for 8, 3 for 4 from the free throw line. He did have 14 rebounds and 13 points. But he was getting cooked by AD the whole entire night. Offensive and defensively. Most of his points coming off uh, rolling to the basket off passes, of course. Mike Conley had a quiet night. Five points in twenty with twenty minutes of play. He was one for seven from the uh shoot. He was one for seven from the field, three for three from the free throw line. And the star of the Minnesota Timberwolves, the guy who now wants to play football if he gets the ring, the BBL bandit and lover, the equivalent of Jordan for some way, somehow, some way. Anthony Edwards scored twenty seven points. He had four turnovers, three assists, six rebounds, five for 13 from three, 10 for 25 from 41 minutes. Now, I got to talk about him for a minute. I don't know if it's in his head he he wants to beat, the, wanted to beat the Lakers or in his head that there's no more Carl Anthony Towns and he has to take a ridiculous amount of stupid ass shots. Realize he went five for 13. From the three point. Towards the end of the game, when they was getting a desperation mode when they got down by 10, he was just jacking up anything. He was just jacking up anything. 
And he's going to need to do something other than just dribble, 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 and try to force the issue by driving to the basket or take a wild ass shot because now people are more keen on to your game. So you're going to have to do something else. You have to show a little bit more in your repertoire than what you're showing. But enough about him. Off the bench, Nas Reed had 12 and four rebounds, uh, three for eight in 26 minutes. Joe Ingles got in there for seven minutes. Dante DiVincenzo, another new addition to the team, 10 points, three for 11 for field, two steals, three assists, three rebounds. And Carlin and Shea Gilchrist, Alexander's cousin, in 28 minutes, scored 14 points, acquired 14 points, five for seven, three for four from three. Now, let's look at what we always want to look at when it comes to being on my channel. Whenever you watch the Lakers play, we always must look at one thing at the bottom of the box score chart. So, 41% from the field from the Timberwolves, 31% from three. And they shot a whopping 74% from the free throw line. Fouls. 22 fouls. They went to the line 27 times. Now for the Lakers. Like I said, it was a ceremony. Light. I said light. Night for the Lakers. As Bronny James finally stepped on the court with his, with his father. I think it was in the second quarter. Midway through the second quarter. Lakers were actually by 20 around that time. And everyone went crazy. But the star, the real star of the night, who got no shine, got no press coverage, you probably will, with the local channels, was Anthony Davis. In 38 minutes, he went 11 for 23, 1 for 3, 13 for 15, 16 rebounds, 4 assists, 3 blocks, 1 steal, and he scored 36 points. Rui Hachimara, a.k.a. Hoochie Mama, scored 18 points, 5 rebounds. He went 7 for 14. And La Homelander, Lapocalypse, Diddy's, no, I'm not going to say that. Anyways, La French Maid, I will say that, scored 16 points, two blocks, four assists, five rebounds. He went seven for 16. Uh, D'Lo Snitch Russell scored nine points. Uh, the great American White Hope, Austin Reeves, scored 12 points, 4 assists, uh, 9 rebounds, 6 for 14 from the field. Off the bench, Jackson Hayes gave some energy with 10 points. Gabe Vincent finally played, 2 points. Max Christie, 2 points. And the rookie, the uh, first-round pick, Dalton Connect. Came off the bench with five points in 16 minutes. And what we all really wanted to see, Bronny James came off the bench with three minutes, went 0 for 2, 0 for 1, negative 5. And he did get one rebound. Hmm. It's, it seems like the NBA has been listening to our channels because now I'm looking at the free throw disparity. Actually, the Timberwolves. Had 27 free throws. Lakers had 25, which is a rarity. And they also had the same amount of fouls, too. Both had 22. But also, the Lakers were in the bonus with seven minutes to go in the fourth quarter, which sounds pretty suspicious. Lakers shot 44% from the field, but they shot terribly from three. Five for 30, 16%. But they shot better from the free throw line. But the thing that was not talked about, and let me read it, because they ain't going to talk about it on ESPN. They're going to avoid it, like the plague. James missed his sixth shot in the third quarter and claimed the record for the most misses in league history at 14,482 misses. The history-making miss came on a transition layup attempt that was defended by Wolves guard Dante DiVincenzo. In the grand scheme of things, the record isn't quite as dubious as it might appear. Shut up! Shut up! 
Because when it came to Kobe, you made sure you guys, oh, Kobe got the most field goals. Kobe got the most field goals. Kobe's a ball hog. He take to me shot. Kobe take to me. Shut up. Don't even try to do that. Don't even try to do that. But anyways, LeBron broke another record. Now he leads in turnovers, and now he leads in missed field goals. Because they made sure to talk about, he has the most points ever in NBA history. And now we're going to talk about the most field goals ever missed in history. And the most turnovers. Motherfuckers. I think y'all guys are slick. So that was history. Two things were made tonight. Bronny playing with his dad. And LeBron becoming the all-time leader in missed shots. Congratulations to the James family. They did well tonight. But now we're going to start hearing, I told you, J.J. Redd is a good coach. J.J. Redd is a good coach. Yeah, we'll see. It's 81 more games left out here. <laughs> the bullshit has just begun. He's a bummy man. He's a bummy man. Tell me what you guys think.